Hello kids, it's Lori from Nourish. If I sound a little odd, it's because I have the sniffles a bit. Mr. Fozo had a cold, and he's still getting over it, and I took a while to get it, and it's not bad at all, so I am saying yay ra to my immune system. But wanted to do a real quick video about my third use of the Instant Pot. I made beans. Now, that's the empty pot. There's a few left in there. This was so easy, it was spooky. Here is the finished product. These are called cranberry beans. They're very much like pinto beans, but they have like a little mark on them that's kind of purpley. And, uh, but they're very much the texture and taste of a pinto bean. They turned out superb. I simply put uh, two cups of the dry beans. I did not soak them. You can soak them and then the time just goes faster. Um, well, the time doesn't go faster, but it takes less time to do it. You see what I mean. Um, so anyway, two cups of cranberry beans. I rinse them. Four cups of water. They warned me <laughs> not to go more than half liquid in here but I didn't have enough beans for it to be a problem. I used the manual setting and punched in 30 minutes. I do believe it, they could have been done in 25 minutes, but I don't mind them being a little overdone. And there's my bean juice or bean broth. I'm trying to figure out what to do with that. But uh, anyway, another success with the Instant Pot, just thrilled to pieces. And the reason I made the beans is because I made some chili. And let's see if I can steady the camera. It does have um, really clean ground chuck in it. I sauteed white onion, actually no, yellow onion, some green onion, carrots, red bell pepper, and then I used, oh, when I put it in the recycling bin already, it was that Knutson brand of, like, their version of V8 juice, all organic. And I also put a can of organic fire-roasted tomatoes, diced tomatoes from Kroger's in. And I used, let's look in the cupboard here. This is something that I found at uh, a bulk store on the way to Indy. And I have seen it in other places. It's called Uncle Al's. What I like about it is there's no preservatives, no MSG, just straightforward ingredients. It is not gluten-free, however. But um, I just like that it's a nice, uh, you know, just your basic ingredients that you need for a thickener and seasoning for your chili. So I use that. And, of course, let's go on out here to the living room. And there's my chili. Looking good. Uh, the beans, I just put the beans in the bottom, so they're, there they are. You can see them in there. Kind of incorporated. Absolutely perfect. This turned out, the beans turned out perfectly. The chili turned out perfectly. I had a whole bunch of leftover pita halves, and uh, normally I would have put uh, olive oil and sea salt on them, but I'm not using olive oil. And there's the oven, um, or the timer going off. I do not want to put olive oil in a high heat environment. So I just simply made triangles, baked it about... Um, Oh, 15 minutes on one side, 10 on the other, and they're crunchy. They could be, if you want them real crunchy, you can take, you know, you could take them apart and make them thinner. But that's going to be a good accompaniment to the chili. So I'm going to dig in. I'm a little stuffed up. If you hear my phone in the background, nothing's ever still and quiet. Somebody left me a text message, and I will go check that. But in the meantime... 
You guys have a nourishing evening. It's supposed to snow starting in the wee hours of the morning quite a bit. So I went to the store today with my mother and I stocked up. I've got my pot of chili that I can eat off of for a few days. And I'm ready to get this cold out of town and get some stuff done around here because Christmas is coming so soon. So have a nourishing evening. Treat yourself well, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.